Namaste guys, welcome along. My name is Jaya Damadas. I'm speaking to you um, 10th of March 2020 and I just have a question to ask you. How are your New Year's resolutions going? Of course it's about this time of the year that they start to, you know, fade big time. I, um, the inspiration for this talk came from another talk actually that a mentor and friend of mine, Acharya Das, gave some time back. And um, he, uh, he had been reading the, uh, he, he lives in New Zealand, he'd been reading the, 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 the national newspaper and found out that, um, you know, 40% of New Zealanders, right, make a New Year's resolution. And so I started to look for information in Australia. I couldn't find much, right? But I did find out that in America, it's about 50%. So, you know, it's a pretty big chunk of society. They make a, a New Year's resolution and that's pretty, that's pretty far out considering or given the fact that our mental health you know status as a nation and internationally is at the lowest ebb that has ever been you know according to the experts in the history of mankind you know people are you know having to use all sorts of psychotropic drugs illicit drugs illicit drugs just to sort of you know get through the day right so for a person to make a um, a resolution regardless of what it is right just it, it's a, a ray of hope right it points to some optimism it's a really really good sign of course as i said you know comes around about this time and you know people start to you know lose their resolve why well a number of reasons right a lot of the you know a lot of the resolutions that we make aren't exactly earth shattering you know lose a bit of weight, get a bit fitter, maybe give up smoking. I mean, they're good things, you know, looking after the health of your body. Don't, I'm not trying to underestimate it, but, you know, it's easy for life to get in the way, right? And for those resolutions to sort of just be pushed to the side. And, you know, just before Easter, this is when it happens, yeah? Because, you know, life is pretty tough. You know, you've got to hold down a job or you've got to pass exams at university, you've got to maintain your health, you've got to, you know, pay the rent, pay the mortgage, you know, you look after mum, etc, etc. It, it, requ it requires a lot of effort and a lot of determination, a lot of discipline, right? And then on top of those sort of basic things, then there's expectations, the expectations of, you know, your friends, your family, of course, and and social media and, and the society in general, right? You gotta be, you know, you gotta have a special, or you, you're expected to have a, you know, a particular type of body image, maybe, I don't know, be a millionaire by 35, have children at a particular age, have a house, etc., etc. and it's just like, whoa, I can't do it. It's just too much. I'm overwhelmed, right? It is, it's very overwhelming, right? And trying to live your life according to other people's standards is never going to really work out well because you know except for our parents perhaps those other people those other benchmarks those those sectors of society they don't have our best interests at heart and even our parents they may have our best interests at heart but they don't have a lot of wisdom in order to be able to guide us etc etc so we arrive some of us arrive, you know, as an individual at a crossroads and we make some determinations, right? Some people, they think, yeah, it is pretty hard, right? But, you know, what else can I do, right? We want to fit in, right? We don't want to stand out. We don't want to be left out. We want some friends at least, right? So I'll stay on the conveyor belt of life. The conveyor belt of life being, you know, you, you grow up, you go to school, you finish school, you get a job or you finish school and go to university and then get a job and then, you know, this will only take a couple of seconds to say but it takes decades and so much energy and so much, you know, emotional input, right, to, you know, find somebody to settle down with, good luck with that one, right, have some children, good luck with that, right, buy a house, you know, all of these things, they're, they're really, really substantial things in our lives, right. And so, you know, people do that, right? And then the children grow up, they don't come back to see you very often, if ever, right? Uh, you go on a holiday, you come back from the holiday, you, you know, you renovate your house, you get really old, your body starts to crap out and you leave your body, you die, right? That's the conveyor belt of life, right? 
some people don't see as there is anything else. Right? Some people, of course, they come to this crossroad and, and they're just freaked out by the whole thing and they become, you know, they go down, you know, a dark alleyway and they become one of those, you know, mental health sort of statistics, right? You can get into some dark areas, right? Take you down to suicide for some people, right? And some people, right, they take a stance. And I'm hoping that you're one of those people, right? They take a stance and they say, enough of this. This is BS, big time BS, right? I'm not going to be living up to, so, to society's standards. Society's standards, where is it taken society? You know, we've got mental health issues, we've got all sorts of issues in society. It's not really heading anywhere bright that I can see, right? I'm taking a stance. I'm looking for an alternative. Right? And I'm here, me, Jayadharma, right? I'm here to tell you very boldly that there are many really good alternatives. And one of those alternatives is the yoga movement, right? The yoga system. And, you know, people come to yoga a lot of people come to yoga via a yoga mat, you know, they go to a yoga class in inverted commas. Of course, there's many, many aspects to yoga, right? Yoga exercises are wonderful. I mean, that's what I do as a day job. I teach yoga asanas and yoga breathing, etc. right? So people, you know, who are looking for a, you know, a, a bit of a watershed moment in their life, you know, a change in their life, something positive, right? They'll come to a yoga class and if they're genuine in their search, they'll figure out eventually that there's more to yoga than simple exercises, right? And uh, perhaps, uh, you know, if they are that genuine, then regardless of the teacher they have, they will be hooked up with a teacher that can take them deeper. And if they have a genuine yoga instructor, right? Meditation instructor, who is coming in a lineage of uh, such instructors, right? then the first mantra that such a person, such a seeker of the truth or a seeker of positive change will be taught is the mantra Aham Brahmasmi, right? which means I am Brahman, which in English means essentially I am spirit, I am the life force within this body. Right? I am not this physical body and I am not the, the mental landscape that covers me. I am Brahman, right? the Atma, the self that lives within. Right? And I am perfect, you are perfect, we are perfect. Right? There, are two, there are two energies, there's a material energy, yeah? and this is the energy that we're all very familiar with. You know, atoms and molecules, hands and faces and ears and bodies, and you know, the sky and the mountains and the water, and the, you know, the, 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 the material elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, etc., etc. The laws of physics, physical energy, right? And then there is the other energy, right? The, um, the eternal, ever beautiful energy, right? Spiritual energy. And the vast majority of our, of our scientists, they don't even recognize it, what to say, understand it. And the few that have an inkling that it exists don't really kind of have much of an inkling. But this is the realm, this is the energy that the yoga masters, right, and the transcendentalists understand perfectly. And this realm holds many secrets to our satisfaction, our happiness, and our optimism, right, which is really what we're talking about in many ways, right. So you hear this, you know, you're perfect just as you are from you know, some well-meaning people from time to time, but the words ring a little bit hollow because, well, they don't, those people, those well-meaning people, oftentimes unable to back it up with a, an adequate explanation. Now, I'm only allotted a certain amount of time to deliver this short message, right? So I'd like to, you know, try and deliver this um, explanation in summary form, right? But uh, if you're really interested in what I'm saying, because this is really just a hello guys, how are you? There's really a, a great cause for optimism in life, etc. Get on the, you know, get involved in the yoga movement, etc., etc. So if you're one of those people, I just suggest that you check out our playlists on this, uh, on this channel because there's so much really cool information, right? So in summary, right, the body that you're wearing, like this body, you see some middle-aged guy, etc., etc., but you're actually not seeing me. Right, this is just sort of like a coating, right, um, that I'm wearing. It's like a vehicle that I'm wearing, right. Um, it, it's not me. In fact, you know, 
in a year about 98% of all the cells in your body change and within three years it's all gone, right? So what is the importance of that? Well, it's March 2021, right? Hark back to March 2018. It's not that long ago, a few years ago. You might even remember what you were doing around that time. You might have been just launching into a, a new career or a new course at university or whatever, right? Depending on your age, etc., etc. right? Within that three year period, that body that you're wearing now has been completely replenished. But you know, right, that you existed back there in March 18, and you know you exist now. And so, you know, that is, gives you cause for pause. Hmm, what is, uh, you know, the common denominator there? That is you, this living being, the self within. And then of course there's the mind, right? And the mind is always changing, I mean, you know, I changed my mind before, just before I came here. Now, I don't think I'll wear the red shirt that I plan to wear. I think I'll wear this sort of, you know, khaki shirt, right? Or perhaps you just want to close your eyes just for a second and just, you know, you have a picture of, you know, so-called me in the screen and whatever you can see behind me. And you see that, right? And you see it on the screen of your mind. And then you ask yourself, well, who's looking at it? My eyes are closed, right? I'm looking at something on my mind. Yes, exactly. And that viewer, right, is you. And it is you, not your body, not your mind. It is you that is perfect, right? You are perfectly eternal, right? You do not perish when the body perishes, right? You are perfectly situated in knowledge. In other words, you have a lot of wisdom, right? You are eternally happy. In fact, they don't even use the word happy, they use the word blissful, ananda, right? And you're eternally youthful and beautiful. Now that, at least philosophically, should give you some cause for optimism, right? It should give you some cause for optimism. And this is nothing, this is not something that's just sort of come out of my fertile imagination. No, this is all backed up by, you know, thousands and thousands of years of, um, of spiritual lineages, teachers passing it on to students, etc., etc., right? Technically known as the Parampara, and all the yoga texts that uh, hark back to very ancient times of Lord Brahma, the Vedic, uh, the Vedic knowledge, right? So this is not something I or the Australian School of Yoga and Meditation are just manufacturing, right? No, we're just simply passing on. So this this information should give you some, you know, just pique your interests somewhat. And you're thinking, well, potentially that sounds okay in theory, but how do I apply it to my life, right? My life, I'm, you know, I've got a screwy life. I've got a weird mind. It's all full of all sorts of, you know, desires and temptations and, you know, ambitions and fears, right? Um, my body is, I've got health issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I must have been a bad boy in the past because I've got a lot of bad things happening to me. You know, the so-called karmic reaction you know, there's a lot of things I'm encountering that aren't so very cool, right? And all my relationships, well, they're not very stable and I'm a bit selfish, etc., etc., right? And I'm here again to boldly tell you that, you know, you don't need any particular qualifications to benefit from the yoga movement, the yoga principles, the yoga practices, the yoga system, none whatsoever. The only qualification you need is honesty, right? You have to honestly ask yourself, you know, I'm 20, I'm 30, I'm 50, I'm 60, whatever, right? How is my life going? What sort of a job have I done, right? Living up to the standards of other people's, following them, you know, the benchmarks of, you know, of, of society in general, etc., etc. getting on that uh, conveyor belt of life. What sort of a job have I done, you know? Yeah, I've got the basics, right? But how satisfied am I, right? I'm always sort of yearning for this, I'm yearning for that. So if you, you know, plumb the depths of your heart and you find that, yeah, I, I could, you know, he's right. I could do with some, you know, a good dollop of satisfaction in my life. Then if you find that, then the yoga practices are for you, right? They really are. Let me just give you an example. Maybe you can relate to this. Maybe you can't, right? Let's say you have a you know, a, a wealthy businessman, some sort of an industrialist, right? He's a big time business guy. He's got a full time chauffeur, driver, and you know, a car that drives him to and from work, right? 
And, you know, people of this caliber, it doesn't matter, you know, if you run a fish and chip shop or you run BHP, people who are in business live and breathe their business. But especially these big guys, right? They're doing deals all the time. They're either working on them or, you know, they're, they're trying to mature them or they're trying to pull them off at the final stages, et cetera, et cetera. So he gets in his car. Now, these, are, these guys are dollars and cents, man. Right? They know, he knows how much his car is costing him. He knows how much his chauffeur is costing him. He knows the state of the car, right? And how much gasoline it uses, you know. It's, you know, basically the condition of the car. And the driver has been with him for many, many years, right? So he knows all the little ins and outs and the nuances and, you know, the, 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 the psychology of his driver, right? But he's not focused on it. He's not focused on it. He's aware of it, but he's not focused on it. He's focused on his business. He's working his phone, he's working his emails, he's doing his deals, right? He's immersed in that world, right? So the analogy really speaks the body, right? The car, right? We know that the, the yogis, they have physical bodies. They know, you know, hey, yeah, it's got this going on. It's got that going on with it. I need to do this. I need to do that. My mind's a bit weird. Right? Just like the driver, the driver's a little bit weird sometimes, etc, etc. But I'm immersed, the yogis are immersed in their yoga meditation, their practices. They're not, um, they don't ignore their responsibilities in the world, to their you know, physical health, their families, their jobs, etc, etc. They're perfectly responsible, but they have this other internal world going on. And you can have this too. We can all have it, regardless of our circumstances and we can all benefit, benefit from it really tangibly. This is not hocus pocus, right? this is real. You can live in this reality. You just need to be honest and you need to apply a bit of time you know, to, to, to discover what these techniques are and a little bit of the, you know, the background information. You don't have to be some great scholar or some philosopher or anything like that, right? You just need to be interested enough to maybe you know research it a little bit right and as I said this channel has a lot of information there regardless of what you're into and my hope is that you take a little bit of time to look into it because um, there is something there guys something real yeah it's just as real as eating you know you have a starving man they sit down at the table they take a morsel of food and they think yes that hit the spot I'm not quite there yet I need to get more but I know where to get it from right and that was my experience when I came to the yoga system when I was a young guy around about 20. You know, I knew nothing. I wasn't qualified in any particular way. All I knew was I was essentially unhappy, dissatisfied, right? And, and out of that dissatisfaction, I had some, you know, bad habits creeping into my life, right? And I got into the yoga system and, you know, things changed. So I hope things can change for you because there is a lot of optimism in life. There is a lot of, you know, there is a lot of positiveness to be experienced in the yoga system. Thank you very much for your time and namaste. Thank you.